So in this video, I just want to show you an alternate way to offset a pattern. So in the previous video, we talked about using a directional warp here to offset a pattern. And we did that with our cracks and our wood pattern. So now I'd like to show you how to do that using a vector warp. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here with this pattern. So uh, here, let's just take a blend. And uh, we're going to use this as our plank pattern. We'll place that into the for uh, background of a blend. And then I'm going to come up here towards the uh, this wood pattern node here, where I have my cracks. And we're going to use this output. So here, uh, let's take our cracks, and we'll place that here into the foreground. And then here I'll do a simple multiply, just so that we can see what we're going to be working with. And just as I had mentioned in the previous videos, right now we're basically just multiplying the crack pattern over top of our plank. And uh, we just get this very uniform, continuous crack pattern as it moves across each one of these planks. And so in the previous video, we use the directional offset to offset this crack pattern. So here is another way we can do that. Uh, we're going to use a node here that is specific to Designer 2017.2, and that's called the Flood Fill. So I'm just going to come in here to my search, uh, look here for the Flood Fill, and we're going to take uh, this plank version that we have here. Uh, first, I'm going to need to create a binary mask out of this. So to do that, I'm just going to create a Levels. I'm going to take the output of this blend and plug it here into the Levels. And then here in the histogram, I'll come over to the input white, and we'll just uh, move this all the way over to the input black. And you can see now we're getting this, um, you know, let's just make this adjustment correctly here. And you can see that we're getting this uh, binary mask. So we can take this type of data and feed that into the flood fill to generate this positional data here. Now from this data, we can use subsequent flood fill nodes, such as this flood fill to random color, to produce outputs that we can use in our texturing process. In our case, we're going to use this random color here to generate a vector map that we're going to use in the vector warp input. So the next node I'm going to create here is just a vector warp. And I'm going to choose this vector warp grayscale. And we're going to take this random color and plug this right here into the vector map. Now, for our input, you can see here we're just going to use uh, this cracks here. So let me just borrow this connection. I'm going to hit the Control key, left mouse button, and just reestablish that connection here. So now when I double click this vector warp, you can see here that the crack pattern has been offset based on this color data, which is representing vectors. So now this offset is happening based on multiple vector positions instead of just using the directional warp which is just using a single offset. So for example, again, we just come back here to directional warp, and you can see that you it's a single direction. We have just this warp angle. With vector warp, we are going to warp or offset these cracks based on multiple vectors. OK, so now that we've done this, all we're going to do now is just replace this offset version here into our foreground of our blend. And let's take a look at the overall result. So here, I'll just kind of zoom in into my 2D view. And you can see that these cracks are being offset. So if we come back here to this vector warp node, we can enter a value, let, let's just say 45. And you can see that it just changes the position, but it's being changed for each plank individually. Again, instead of it just being a single angle offset like we have with the directional, directional warp. So this vector warp node just gives you another solution that you can use to offset patterns. In my case, I had to use the flood fill node to generate this random color pattern, that, again, that I'm using for the vector. And I'm able to do that by just using a levels here to generate this binary mask from my original pattern that I had here for my planks. One thing to mention here, with this vector warp, you are getting a better offset, again, because it's multi-directional. However, this vector warp is a lot heavier to compute than just using that directional offset. So depending on the usage and how much you want to optimize your graph, this vector warp may or may not be the best solution. But it's always good to know all the options that you have.